Hey, I am 3 Plus Key, your favorite social worker. Welcome back. I'm here to encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health, and persistent education. I'm here today to talk about sequencing the conversation when you are in social services. And this isn't just for social workers. This is also for volunteers, child care workers, those working with um, families or anyone else that may come to your organization or company for uh, social services. So that's what this is about, sequencing the conversation. We're going to cover five points. That's flatten the power dynamic, hear their story, explore support systems, use expertise and courage, and make a plan to have ongoing conversations until the client reaches their solution. So we will start with number one, uh, flattening the power dynamic. When our clients are coming to us, they're in trouble. <laughs> they're, they're here for a reason. They may be expecting us to be the experts of the situation. They may be expecting us to swoop in and save the day. At any rate, um, there is something of um, a, a, a power dynamic that puts us up here and them down there, whether it's announced or not. And what we want to do is bring that dynamic to a more even keeled space. We want to come alongside people as neighbors, friends, brothers, and sisters, and less of professional know-it-alls that are going to come in and rescue you from your life. You're rescuing. That's, that's kind of it. They're coming in to rescue themselves from their lives and we are assisting them in that process. So there's four points under flattening the power dynamic. Create the safe environment and put the client at ease. Explain service in layman's terms. Arrive authentically and expect the client is the expert. So uh, point A under flattening the power dynamic, creating a safe environment and putting the client at ease is vital. Uh, wherever possible, you want to um, have a dimmer lighting, you want an environment that's free from distraction, so not a lot of people talking, not a lot of people coming in and out of the space. You want to be able to put the client at ease, so simple gestures such as offering coffee or tea, um, baked goods or or fruit um, if it's a place that deals with children perhaps having a small box of toys available or um, books point b explaining the service in layman's terms that is without jargon so here we have um Missoula Housing Authority so what you don't want to say in introducing that service is um, MHA is a state funded agency that utilizes funds to provide affordable housing for those living within the limits of Missoula County. That's a lot to take in when you don't have a house. <laughs> Instead, you could say Missoula Housing Authority has cheaper rentals and leave it there. Um, I've said over and over again, even me with all of my education, nobody cares about your stupid books. What they care about is that you are meeting them with compassion, some level of knowledge, and that you're not making their problems worse with uh, your, your attitude or your know-it-allness of the situation. Uh, point C, arriving authentically. Sometimes you get to working with someone and maybe, you know, it's not your best day. You're in a bad mood or, or something to that effect. I think it's perfectly acceptable to just make a passing comment. Oh, I'm so tired. How are, how are you? 
or something, something like that. You know, um, if you try to perk up and, and be funnier or be lively when that's not where you're at in that moment, um, it can come off as very forced. Uh, likewise, how you express care is important as well. Uh, some people do the Drew Barrymore lean in and that's authentic to them and that's fine. If that's not authentic to you, the lean in can come, <laughs> the lean in can come off as a little creepy. So, um, at any rate, you, you just want to have casual, um, mannerisms and language and then finally point d expect that the client is the expert the fancy social work term is self-determination um the client is the expert in their own lives they get to determine what how much effort they're going to put toward the outcome and what they want the outcome to be so for instance in the housing sector of social work not everybody wants a house with a backyard in the country some people are fine with their tent and they need to find a piece of land where they can put their tent or their camper um some people would like more space some people don't care at all. Some people might want to live in one neighborhood over another or have no opinion on the matter. At any rate, the client is the expert on what they want and how they want to get there once they have all of the information. So all of these are under flattening the power dynamics so that you can move forward. Number two is hear their story. Um, there's six points. Let them, let them tell their story. Don't interrupt. Listen to gain understanding, not to determine next steps. Confirm your understanding. Praise the things they're doing well and be mindful of body language. Um, point A, let them tell their story. Um, people have their own perceptions of how events played out or how they came to be in the situation that they're in. We're not here to, to judge it. We're not here to uh, make assumptions or, 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 or make guesses or indictments on the behaviors that led them. We're just listening to how they perceive their situation. Point B, don't interrupt. I know it is so tempting, especially when uh, some people are talkers and they go on and on and on. Now, it could be a nervous thing. It could be that nobody has been listening to them anyway. Within the time constraints that you have, let them get it off their chest. And what you will find is you will compile even more information than if you did interrupt, which leads me to point C, listen to gain understanding, not to determine next steps. So the social worker, we our wheels start turning, oh, they need to sign up for this. They need this resource. They need to go here. Reel it in. Reel it in. Let them tell their story. Don't interrupt. And then once they get to where they're going, because you can take notes. Once you get to, they get to where they're going, then you'll have a full picture of services. If housing is an issue, um, it could be that they need child care to search for housing or child hair, child care to get the employment to get the housing. So if you had listened fully, you would understand that um, perhaps a child care scholarship is what you should be pursuing first. Point D, confirm your understanding. Um, I'm going to repeat this back to you so that I uh, understand what what your situation is or what your question is or repeat it back did i get that right am i missing anything this not only confirms your understanding um but confirms that you've been listening which is showing care point e praise the things they're doing well you've made it this far i've said it all the time all these years in social services you're still here you're still kicking 
you're doing something right like you're you're alive so you're you're still finding the food you're still finding the shelter i know it's less than ideal but you're still doing it. <laughs> you know so let's get you on a on a different plan a different path and uh let's see if we can take it up a notch right praise the things are doing well they're doing something right they're they're still here and they came in to see you today they got here didn't they and finally, uh, point F, be mindful of body language. That's yours and theirs. So uh, a, a point of anxiety might be the, the knee, their, their knee is going up and down or, the, or they're frazzled. Um, you want to pay attention to body language because it'll give you some insight into perhaps how they manage stress or um if if their body language is closed off how this might impact um future employment you might want to broach the subject of interpersonal skills or something like that and then your own body language are you you know you got your you're closed off you've got your uh your arms crossed like you don't even want to be there um you know, are you leaned in? When you lean in, do they lean in or do they do they not like that? You want to pay attention to these things. And all of that is a part of hearing their story and presenting yourself as a social worker, as someone who cares and is here to assist in their efforts. Point three, explore support systems. There's uh, three points under this. A, explore... Um, all points of uh, support systems be nearby or far away and c get a working understanding of their environment so point a as far as exploring support systems you want to explore co-workers former bosses teachers probation officers church members extended family friends of the family etc anybody and everybody who has helped you past present um or says they will help you in the future who are these people to you can you utilize them what does that look like point b nearby or far away you might have a grandma in texas and she could be lonely she could just be waiting for you to <laughs> to to come in move down there and and cut her grass or or what have you or she just may want to assist you um you might have somebody a friend across the country that has a mother-in-law on top of their garage and you can rent from them right um the same things go with our own communities um, i have a friend that has a camper in front of her house and from time to time uh one of her friends that are down on their luck she lets them stay in the camper. So you want to cover all bases and finally see, get a working understanding of their day-to-day uh, -day environment. So questions like who would be upset if they knew you were here? That's in the positive and the negative. Who would be upset if they knew you were here? And the negative is perhaps a, an abuser or somebody that has ill intent toward the client um that would be upset if they were seeking help or assistance but in the positive who would be upset if you were here maybe maybe your best friend would help if we just asked her you know maybe your supervisor would help if if we asked them if they knew about the situation so we want to cover that who has listened to you when you've had a tough day is it grandma auntie the mailman where can you take a shower, use the phone, eat dinner, et cetera? These basic questions. Um, and again, what you're trying to do is ascertain their day-to-day -day environment. What does it look like? Are there any threats? Are there any support systems? And finally, what did your situation look like when things were going better? And so it could be, you know, I was in school and I had a job and and um i still had my kids with me okay great so who is in your life then and what was going on in your life then and how do we get back to um those people and and those support systems so that's explore the support systems point four use expertise and encourage 
three points, offer to call and mediate, connect to resources via warm handoffs, and have the clients back. Under point A, offer to call and mediate. Typically, if the client has a phone, I'll have them call on their phone only because they will then have the number. So if I call from my phone, um, an employment service or, or something like that, um, it's not really helpful because they don't have the number. And they, they can't really follow up past that. There's, and there's no log. If the person calls them back, there's no call log to say, oh, I've communicated with this number before. So have them call on their phone. Um, let them lead. Um, if they're nervous, you can say, hi, my name's Lakitha. I'm with 3 Plus Key LLC. I'm here with Brenda, and we're here to talk about, uh, we're calling about housing. Do you have any available rentals? Right? So that might be how you would use your own voice, but you want to clarify that with the client ahead of time. You want to make sure you get their permission. Otherwise, they're using their phone. You kind of coach them perhaps before the call. I think that's acceptable. And then um, while they're talking, you know, nod your head, give them a little, a little fist pump, like, yeah, you're doing it, right? And uh, hopefully you give them um, something to anticipate. They're going to ask you these questions and this is how you respond or how would you like to respond? So offer to call and mediate. Point B, connect to resources via warm handoffs. This is so vital. So if I take a client to, let's say, the um the 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 job office for um an interview um or 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 employment services i would i would say hi my name is uh lakitha i'm here with brenda we've been working together doing these things we're here um to meet you uh sasha um, because you are the employment specialist and I understand your job is such and such. So here is our client, Brenda, and um, let me know if you have any questions is, a, is an example of a warm handoff. You want to say what you do, say what the other person does so that the client has a full understanding of what is happening in this moment and also understands there's friendly relations between organizations. And point C, have the clients back. You want to commit to helping them succeed, root for them, right? Like they came in for assistance. That was the first step. And sometimes that's hard. We've got pride issues. We have transportation issues, childcare. A lot may have happened to coordinate their efforts to be sitting in front of you today that deserves a cheer <laughs> commit to helping them succeed from that point on don't get cr frustrated if the client gets frustrated just motivate them and adjust the the plan um part of that is co-regulation right if they're like upset it's not going their way you need not get upset with them just let them know these things happen um you know, confirm that their feelings are valid. And then let's just pivot. We're going to pivot. We're going to create a different um, plan and we're going to move forward, hopefully, prayerfully, right now, right in this moment. And finally, um, the client is the expert of their own life. That brings it back to the beginning of self-determination. They know what they want. They know what they need what your opinions on the matter are only from your own worldview and your own life perspective your opinions on the matter are what you yourself would do it that may not be helpful for them a suggestion or two um you might gauge that to see how they receive it but if they want to go on their own path let them you're here to assist not to dictate not to judge and finally the fifth one uh the fifth point make a plan to have ongoing conversations until the client reaches their solutions so this might be 
handing them a card at the end of the visit. It might be setting another appointment. That That's one thing that could be happening. Um, it might be um, introducing, doing the warm handoff to another organization, but just make sure you have a plan in place that the client has next steps, the next thing to do, so they can continue to um, reorient their lives and, and be contributors to society and, and live their best lives. Um, and so that's what I've got for sequencing the conversations. One more time, the five points were flattening the power dynamic, hearing their story, exploring, exploring support systems, using expertise and encouragement, and making a plan to have ongoing conversations until the client reaches their solution. Um, I hope this was helpful. I am three plus key. I'm your favorite social worker. I'm here to encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health, and persistent education. Share this video with someone who could benefit from this information. Like this video if you love it. And do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Comment below if this has been helpful for you. And I will talk to you later.